All right, let's do landing page analysis using Google Analytics. And this is Rick with LearnDigitalAdvertising.com. You can find us on our website or on YouTube. Um, we're going to go over three different ways to look at landing pages in Google Analytics, uh, just from the very basic level of using the landing page report. Um, we're going to step that up a notch and show you how to use segments to make that report way more useful. And then lastly, we're going to go over a custom report. Um, we're going to share that template as well below this video, uh, wherever you're seeing it. Um, you'll be able to see that template if you want to just take it and use it as your own. You are welcome to, free of charge. So let's jump right in. So in Google Analytics, to get to the landing page report, we are going to go behavior, site content, and landing pages. Now let's quickly begin by defining what this report is showing. This report is simply showing sessions based on where the first visit of the session was, thus the landing page. So we're not saying that this particular landing page has had this much traffic. We're just saying that's how many sessions began on that landing page. Everything about this report follows that same logic. When we get over to the conversions for this particular page, we're not saying that 124 people converted on that landing page. We're simply saying that the sessions that began on this landing page led to 124 transactions. That is the first thing I think that's really important to realize. Just because a page has a high or a low conversion rate doesn't necessarily mean that the page is good or bad. Um, there's a lot of things to take into account here and the devil is in the details here. Um, but really what we wanna just get across there is that these metrics are really session metrics. They are not so much related to the page themselves with the exception of the uh, part of the behavior anyways, the bounce rate uh, metric. So. Um, but let's jump in a little more and show why that matters. Um, first things first, let's just review a line item here. Let's take line item two, which is a specific, uh, I think, product category page we have. We get the number of sessions and new sessions and users. So again, these are the number of sessions that began on this landing page. That's pretty clear. Next, we have the bounce rate. This is very specific to the landing page itself. 14% of people just left when they got here. That's what that means. Now the pages per session, when they land on this page first, and I'm gonna keep bringing back to that, they go to 7.63 pages, and that's a little bit less than average, right? These are some things we're starting to think about. Average session duration, we're gonna compare that as well. When they land on this page, how long do they stay? So that's a, a lot of the behavioral stuff that you could look at at a, a very high level. Many people get uh, very uber focused on things like bounce rate for landing pages and all of that. There are situations where you should. Um, so there are important metrics to consider. Conversions, uh, we think, are the most important. So when people land on this particular page, this is the number of transactions from those sessions. This is the overall e-commerce conversion rate. Uh, just at a glance, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing an e-commerce conversion rate that's almost double what our average is. So it seems like it could be a pretty good page to send traffic to. The problem with all of this analysis is that it's not considering the traffic source. By default, Google shows you all users, and then it just groups together all these landing pages. I think many beginning analysts then jump right in and say, well, this page is bad and this page is good and we got to fix this bad one and we got to copy this good one. It's actually not at all the way you need to approach this because the traffic source is as important as the landing page itself. For example, if we are running an ad that is terrible, a terrible Facebook ad, think of the worst Facebook ad you've ever ran. If you're running that ad to one product page and just sending tens of thousands of hits, of course it's going to have a low conversion rate because the traffic is terrible. That's what we need to consider here. So how do we make this report useful? Let's do it by segmenting. So here's all users. We don't care about all users. Let's take a specific segment. Um, Hmm, how about paid traffic? So I'm just gonna grab a paid traffic segment up here. And let me just step back for some of sort of beginner analysts here. What we're doing with segments is we're saying, don't show me all users, just show me users who came in through paid traffic, for example. Now I get their specific landing page data, right? All these same landing pages, just a lot less data because now I'm only looking at paid traffic. In fact, I should have done this a second ago. Let me grab all users again, just to illustrate really how different traffic sources can perform. Let's look at the homepage, for example. Paid traffic converts at 1.31%, but all users converted almost twice that. Let's look at this particular product category page. Paid traffic converts at five and a quarter percent, 
all users at 4.98%. See if we can find one that's really different. We have a service area page here, and this is just a page that's about a specific city that we do business in. Paid traffic converts at only 0.82%, whereas all users, you know, roughly three times that, three and a half times that. So the point is that you cannot just look at all users and say a landing page is good or bad. You have to drill down to the traffic, uh, sort of the traffic source level. Now on this, I only went to paid traffic and that's like a whole medium, right? Really what we probably should do here is drill into very specific campaigns. So let's do that. We're gonna get rid of all users because that's not helpful. Paid traffic is actually not helpful either. I'm just gonna add a custom segment here we're going to call this, we have a campaign here where we promote the chairs that we rent. So I'm just going to call it chairs. And then under conditions, I'm just going to go ahead and say that the campaign name, because I happen to know that it contains the word chair in it. We'll just grab that. And when you're building a segment, if you don't know this, what basically happens on the right side here as you build it is it estimates the size of the audience just so that you can get a feeling for whether you're filtering correctly. So now I wanna look at these landing pages. Now this is getting useful, right? Because now I can see all the different landing pages specific to campaigns that I have that are related to chairs. And now I can truly do an analysis and say, maybe this landing page right here, which is never converted, isn't ideal. And maybe this one that converts at 5% is, or maybe I wanna flip around my conversion rates and just sort by the highest converting pages and look at some of those uh, as well. Um, you'll see some here that have 100% conversion rate. Now, the statistician in us knows that, you know, measuring traffic for just one session isn't really statistically significant. So what we could do on the advanced setting here is actually just filter to only show landing pages that have maybe more than um, 10 sessions. And again, that is not going to be statistically significant either, but it is, it is meant to illustrate a point um, that basically says, whenever you're analyzing landing pages or anything in Google Analytics, make sure you're not looking at, looking at a sample size that is tiny. Make sure you're looking at something that's substantial. Um, but you know, in this particular case, we really have one primary, I'll just do a little sort here. You'll see there's one landing page that we mostly use, but in some cases, you know, we have some site links. This is from Google Ads. We have some site links that could go to, you know, other pages. Um, and, you know, of those, you know, we have, you know, the home page looks like a reasonable conversion rate relative to the category there, uh, the category page there. And then we've got another one that's a different, slightly different type of furniture, um, which doesn't have any conversions, but the sample size is pretty low. Um, and I'm just kind of walking through some of the mental steps here just to say, hey, Big picture here, landing page report, never just look at it, filter for your campaign or type of campaign. Maybe you run a bunch of email marketing and if your emails are always the same topic. Maybe you just want to get a general feeling for whether the home page is an okay place to send traffic, even though everyone says you can't do it. And oftentimes you find out it works better than some of the specific landing pages do. Um, so it, that's what this is meant to do is really just combine segmentation with the landing page themselves to make that analysis. So those are two ways, and that's just using standard reporting. Let's just jump in and do something a little bit different now. We're going to go to custom reports. I'm going to do a new custom report, and this one I'm going to call. And again, we're going to be sharing this custom report with you below the video, wherever you find it. I'm going to call it the landing page report. Okay. Now let's talk about the metrics we're going to look at first. We're going to keep this really basic because I think that the regular Google Analytics reports have way too much data that, are, that isn't really useful. So first, I'm just going to grab the number of sessions. I want to just grab, I think the bounce rate's important when looking at a landing page as well. I'm going to, uh, let's keep this e-commerce focused. So let's look at uh, transactions and let's look at revenue. So we've got some metrics. So these are the main metrics that I want to focus on. Now the dimension drill down. So typically, if you're on the regular Google Analytics landing page report, you would make your primary dimension. And again, the dimension is the non-quantitative value. It's the value all the way on the left side of that chart. And typically, they would put the landing page there. But here I would argue, let's just flip this a little bit. And instead, let's start with the medium. I'm going to put that on top. 
And uh, actually, let's just do source medium. We'll keep this one a little bit simple. Um, and then let's look at the landing page. We could do that. We could possibly throw campaign in before. Now, how you stack this is important, right? Because what this is going to do, I'll show you, it's going to create a table then that shows source medium, which we would choose, and then it's going to give us landing pages for that source and medium. Now, if we want to add another layer before we got to the landing page, we could say, okay, let's choose the source medium, then the campaign, and then let's drill into a landing page report. Um, so it really just depends on you know the data and what you're analyzing. But let me just show you what this looks like on the front end here. So we have all of our source medium, right, which is our primary dimension, and then the metrics that we want to track. And now this only becomes useful once we click into one of these. So maybe I'm going to jump into Google CPC as a whole. And now I'm going to get my landing pages. And if I wanted to, and if I felt like analyzing landing pages just for all of CPC would be uh, a good way to do it, I could do that, right? Um, if we took this a step further, let's go back and edit this report. We're going to make it a little better because I realized I just forgot a uh, metric. And we're going to look at the uh, e-commerce conversion rates. I think that one's pretty uh, good. Where are the e-commerce conversion rate? There it is. And I'm, I am going to go ahead and add the campaign in between here. So now I'm going to be able to choose a source medium that'll show me all the relevant campaigns to that source medium. And then once I drill into the campaign itself, I can do an awesome analysis of landing pages. So let's do that again. Google CPC. Got a bunch of different campaigns here. Maybe I'll, uh, I'm going to grab something with some volume, maybe just our brand campaign if that's uh, going to be useful. And now my brand campaign, I could do analysis. Let me get my face out of the way here. And here's where I'm going to look for, because I know that this is from my brand campaign, CPC, right? I've got this filtered down. These landing pages isn't not just all landing page traffic. It's just for that particular campaign. And I've got a huge variety of e-commerce conversion rates, right? Overall, I'm at about 3%, but I've definitely got pages below that. And I've definitely got some pages as well that are up at like 8% and 11%. And some of these, again, I'm not like plugging these into a statistical significance calculator, but this one at 11%, I mean, it's got nine conversions. Here's another one with 10 conversions. So to me, I see some strong indicators that for my brand campaign, linking into some of these category pages for tables or chairs um, are some of the most effective ways I can run these ads. I may even want to consider not running those ads to the home page. It's only a 2.46% conversion rate and it's the bulk of my traffic. I just tried to imagine if I ran nothing there and instead ran it to interior category pages, what could this look like instead of 119 transactions? Could that be 200 transactions? I don't know, but I want to find out. That's what this report I think is supposed to help you with is take that traffic source, drill into it, look at the landing pages, look at the outliers, find those zero percents that have pretty you know high traffic. Here's a search page. Maybe our search page just doesn't work right. So we just don't want to send traffic. Oh, that's fine. We can fix it or just send it somewhere else for now. So that's how I would analyze this. The key pieces being you cannot analyze landing pages without considering the traffic source. And what level you need to drill down to, uh, I think is up to really the volume that you do on your website. If you're really you know, a slow website in terms of not a lot of traffic, a small business, you're gonna have to keep this analysis a little bit higher to keep the numbers statistically relevant. That said, if you're super high volume, I wouldn't just look at email or just pay-per-click. I would drill down to the campaign level and really just take a really close look and figure out for each campaign, you know, what is working the best and you know, adjust and make improvements. So. If you have questions, ask below. If you want to make fun of us, you may do the same below. Uh, thank you for joining us and hope this helps your landing page analysis within Google Analytics. Thanks.